Welcome to Anywhere Math. I'm Jeff Jacobson, and today we're going to talk about ratios. Before we get into an example, let's talk about what a ratio is. Ratio is pretty simple. It's just a comparison of two quantities. Uh, and the thing is, we can write ratios three different ways. So for example, if we're comparing A to B, I can write the ratio as A to B. Right? I can spell out the word too. A to B. I could also write it as A with a colon. And I would read it as A to B as well, but I would use this colon to compare the two. Uh, and then the third way, I could write it as a fraction. Uh, a to B would be A over B like that. So those are the three ways that we can write ratios. They would all be equivalent to each other. It doesn't matter which one you use. Um, when we start getting into uh, equivalent ratios and, and things like that, oftentimes you'll write it as a fraction. Uh, just because it makes it a little bit easier. But you've got three ways to do it. Now, let's look at an example. All right, here's example one. Write the following ratios. So for part A, you're finding the ratio of the pennies to quarters. Uh, here's my coins over here. So all I need to do is find, well, first, how many pennies are there? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six pennies. Then how many quarters? Well, Q for quarters, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, looks like seven quarters. So I can write my ratio as six to seven, or I could do six to seven like that, or six over seven. Any one of those three would work. Uh, if you want to try the other three on your own, go ahead, pause the video and, and give them a try. But let's let's move on. Uh, quarters to dimes, same thing. Well, I already know that there's seven quarters because we counted that before. Now I just need to know how many dimes. Uh, so seven, two for dimes. D right here, one, two, three. Seven to three. Okay, good. Next one, dimes to total coins, where again, there were three dimes, so I have that. Now we're comparing to total coins. Well, there were seven. Six pennies plus seven quarters, so that's 13, plus three dimes gives me 16. So dimes to total coins would be three to 16. Okay. And the last one, D, pennies to total coins. Uh, again, I know that there are six pennies because we found that earlier. So six to total coins was 16. Now here, we can uh, basically, with ratios, you know you can write it like a fraction. In fractions, we can simplify. Same thing with ratios. 6 to 16, I could simplify as 3 to 8. Okay, And these ratios are equivalent. They're equivalent ratios. So either one of those would work. Here's one to try on your own. Example two, use ratio tables to organize equivalent ratios. Uh, so we're going to talk about more uh, with equivalent ratios right here. And like we said in the first example, uh, it's basically like simply simplifying fractions, right? You have equivalent fractions. Uh, you can also have equivalent ratios. Uh, and we're going to use an, uh, a ratio table like what you see here to help us kind of organize those. Uh, so first, with A. You can see we're comparing pens to pencils. For every one pen, we have three pencils. So the ratio of pens to pencils is one to three. That's uh, in simplest form you could think of. But we can make equivalent ratios uh, by adding on more. So if we look to fill in this table, well, if what if I have two pens? Well, then how many pencils would I have if I'm keeping the same ratio if I'm doing an equivalent ratio. Well, 
if I add one here, I would have to add three here because for every pen, I get three pencils. So if I add one pen, that means I add three pencils, which would mean it would be two to six. Uh, same thing here. I added three more pencils, and for every three pencils, I add a pen. So I would add one here, and it would be three to nine. So one to three, two to six, three to nine, those are all equivalent ratios. And it, it should uh, be familiar. If you write it like a fraction, one third, two six, three ninths, those are all equivalent fractions. So, so same kind of thing. So we can find our equivalent ratios by adding, like we did there. Uh, but part B, there's another way we could do it. We could also think using multiplication or division. Uh, for every four dogs, there's six cats. So the ratio is four to six. From six to 12, I can use multiplication. Well, I multiplied by two. So if I'm going to use multiplication or division, I do the same thing to both. Okay, Just like when you're doing... Uh, Fractions, anything you do to that denominator or numerator, you do the same thing to the denominator if it's multiplication or division. So 4, I'm also going to multiply by 2. So that would give me 8. 8 to 12 is equivalent to 4 to 6. Uh, same thing here. From 8 to 24, I times by 3. So here I'm also timesing by 3. 12 times 3 is 36. Okay. Those are all equivalent ratios, 4 to 6, 8 to 12, and 24 to 36. Okay, And I could also go the other way here. If you notice, 4 to 6, uh, we could simplify that. We could divide both of them by 2, and I would get 2 to 3, which is also an equivalent ratio. Here's something to try on your own. Here's our last example. Example three. The label on a box of crackers says that there are 240 milligrams of sodium. Okay, that's just salt for every 36 crackers. Uh, how much sodium do you consume if you ate 15 crackers? Now, if you're thinking, uh, how can I go about solving this? If you remember to the last example, uh, we used ratio tables. So let's do the same thing here. Uh, our ratio is 240 milligrams. Uh, to 36 crackers, so 240 to 36. So on top, I'll just do the sodium, which was measured in milligrams, compared with crackers. And as always, if you want to try this on your own, go ahead and pause it. So 240 to 36. Now, I want to get to 15 crackers. Okay. Well, I can't just divide 36 by something to get to 15. I mean, I could, but it wouldn't be very nice. Uh, but if I look at this 240 and 36, I could simplify that. So maybe I'll do that first, and that might help. Um, the greatest common denominator, or sorry, greatest common factor of 240 and 36 is 12. So if I divide that by 12, I get 3. And if I divide 240 by 12, I get 20. Okay. So same thing. I still don't have 15 crackers like I want. Uh, but 3 times 5 is 15, so that would be nice. If I just times that by 5, I get 15. So to get my equivalent ratio, I would do the same thing to the 20. 20 times 5 would give me 100. So the question, how much sodium do you consume if you ate 15 crackers? Well, the answer would just be you would eat or you would consume 100 milligrams of sodium. Okay. Here's another to try on your own. As always, thanks for watching, and if you like this video, please subscribe.